I'm going to do a few little short sessions. Hopefully you, you'll enjoy it. I'm going to cover float fishing, swing tip, quiver tip, pole fishing, and fish bread flake, hemp, tears, chop worm in coloured water, and see how I get on. Do press the subscribe button if you like the vids. I'm on the River Chew during the second phase of lockdown in November. I'm five minutes away from my doorstep and uh, a tributary to the Bristol Avon. It's free fishing, so you can get here by bus, train, and there's even a, a tackle shop, Premier Angling, one of the best tackle shops in the southwest at walking distance. So it's also got a car park behind if you're driving. There's a great little venue. I love free stretches. I think they're really important for um, getting new people into fishing. Uh, typically when you think roach fishing, you think very fine tackle, um, as light a hook length as you possibly get away with. Well, that still applies here, but um, the lightest I can get away with is probably four or five pounds because of the, the chub and the barbel. And also, it is snaggy as hell. So um, I'm going to be using uh, light um, homemade ledger links, basically using swan shot um, on a weak link. Yeah, swinging in the 60s, swing tips in the 80s. They're uh, a very sensitive fight indication. It's all about roach. So when it's flooding, I use lobworm. When it's fining down, I tend to use bread flake. And I found from experience putting ground bait in just draws in a, an endless shoal of minnows that never can never be fed off. Yeah, if you start balling out your ground bait, even if it's a very heavy mix, trying to predict where that's going to land when you've got seven or eight, sometimes ten foot of water for it to travel through, it's almost impossible. You need to be on top of the bait that you're putting out, and the easiest way of doing that is with a bait dropper. Well, I'm getting lots of bites on this worm, but I'm not getting hookups. I might change to a lighter hook length and, and try this bread flake. This is doing my head in a little bit. There you go, another bite. I'll do something. Tiny fish or cagey roach? Blanking. That's acceptable. I'm not changing spots when you're blanking. Unforgivable. Hello Fraser. <laughs> it's the best thing that's happened all morning seeing you guys. Really? Yep. Did you not catch one yet? No, I've caught one. I'm back for a third time to try and catch this roach. <laughs> what am I doing? I'm gonna um, fish with a little bit of a finer approach today. I might even pole fish it because the water's cleared right out and dropped right down. So I've moved into some deeper water, it's about 10 foot in front of me. There's no real features to fish to, but I'm just hoping that depth will offer them some cover. So it's one of the poles I use for coaching, which means it's gonna have a huge connector on the end so the um, pupils can get the rigs on and off easily without having to use their teeth. The other thing I do with beginners is give them really long rig winders, then they don't have to worry too much about where the float is positioned when they're putting it away. And whenever I'm fishing hemp, I like to have some of these as well. A popular roach bait. Bend it round past the bend. So the point show. <laughs> Scaling down to size 22, it's lip hooked. Look at that black spot, it's quite common in roach. Beautiful. Let's hope there's more.
question is, is there still any big ones in here? I have to know. If anyone's caught any big ones, perhaps I have to tell the whole world. Drop me a message. <laughs> I can't believe how big that fish was that jumped though. That was huge. Like a sea trout, a brown trout. My obligation to abide by lockdown restrictions and fish as locally to home as possible is what brought me down to the river chew in search of roach. And I have to be honest, it hardly filled me with excitement. But it is such an intriguing little